Hi everyone. This, this is Mo at Issaquah Sewing and I hope that you're seeing me on screen today because we were having a little camera difficulty. So let's see what's going on today. I'm here to give you a tip and a deal and what I'm going to be doing today is talking about our cutting mats. Okay, cutting mats are a really important part of the work that we do and so understanding them is really important. I'm going to move the camera down here so you have an opportunity to see what I see. On my table here you're going to see that I have various cutting mats. The one on top that's shiny I just want to use for illustration. This is a cutting mat that is created by Quilter Select. I love this mat because it's very heavy duty. This is a nice solid heavy cutting mat. And you'll notice that on top it is really dark. But if I flip it over, there's a light side to the mat that equally has markings, the same type of markings. And why could that be important? For those of you who really like to follow your cutting using the marks on the mat, this helps you with contrast to your fabric. I know at my house right now I have a black cutting mat. It makes it really challenging to cut black fabric. And so to be able to flip the mat is really an awesome thing. That's what Quilter Select has to offer in the way of their cutting mats. And again, they're very heavy, very solid. So I'm gonna bring forward a tiny little Ulfa cutting mat. And the Ulfa cutting mat, um, these are the tried and true Ulfa is such a great name. Ulfa's mats have markings on one side and they're plain on the other side. These mats as well as the Quilter Select are a self-healing mat and self-healing means that if I cut them with a rotary cutter that that cut mark is going to heal and allow me to use this mat over and over and over again. When you go out to purchase your mat one important thing about a, a cutting mat is making sure that you keep it nice and flat and balanced. So when you're storing your mats away, they have to store flat. If you store them up on their side, they have the opportunity to bow, right? And you could get a little bit of a bow in your mat. If you store them in an area where they get direct sunlight, you have that opportunity to warp your mat, okay? So think about your mat and what's going on with it in the current moment. Because when you're using a ruler, oh, I thought I had a ruler here, but that's okay. When you put your fabric down and you make that first cut, I'm gonna grab a ruler, just a moment. Okay, so let's say you're coming in and you are going to make that first cut. You can use the lines on your ruler to get that nice straight line. Okay, that's real clear. There's a lot of people beyond that point start to doubt that their mats have not been warped or tampered with or gone askew. And in that instance, that group of folks tend to like the mat that is plain on the back because they can lay their fabric down and use the lines on their ruler to get that accurate cut. So there's the school of folks that use their mats for accuracy and there's the school of folks that use their ruler for accuracy. And in that instance, they do like to have a mat that's blank on the back. So the nice thing and the thing to look for, look for when you're purchasing a mat is that it is self-healing on both sides. That's really important. Okay, this little one that I'm flipping around, this is one of my favorite size of mats. It sits next to me, next to my pressing station, so that when I'm pressing my seams, I have this nice little mat to cut off dog ears. I love this mat, love, love, love. And here we go on to talk a little bit more. We have our cutting mats and we are using them and abusing them and cutting and having a great time with our cutting mats. But the truth be told, we get to a point where our mats get pretty darn dirty. And the one thing I want to talk about is how do you clean a mat that has become dirty? And what I mean by dirty is right along here, this darker line you're seeing here, this is fuzz from me 
cutting batting. And all of you who have cut batting, you realize you pull away and in that cut, you have all this fuzz. So I'm gonna teach you how to clean your mat. There's so many, so many people out there that have an idea, but I'm gonna tell you the one that works best uh, for us here. What I have in my hand right now is a gum eraser. Okay, it is called the gum eraser, not the pink pearl eraser, the gum eraser. And when I was back in school, we bought these because they thought that they would erase ink. And all I realized in my days at school was they put a nice hole in my paper after I tried to get all that ink and it never did work. But here's what this eraser is fabulous for. It will clean the dirt out of your mat. So if I go forward and just I'm doing a light circle right in this area and then when I move away you'll see that I am cutting the mess off my mat. And look all of that is coming out. But the other good part is what I am running over the mat is also going down into that cut and healing that portion of the mat. So I'm removing in small circles and I'm actually healing this mat. All right? That's my tip for today. How to make some decisions about purchasing a mat, a cutting mat, and how to take care of the cutting mats we do have at home. Don't put them in the heat. And that is also our deal for today as well. Our deal for today is 25% off our cutting mats. Now, one thing I do want to say is next week is a very exciting, very busy week here in the store. So you will not get a snippet from me next week because we're going to be um, running around like we're herding cats with their tails on fire. But that's all right because that's a good thing around here. We love it. We love the enthusiastic excitement. Next week, you're going to be joining us for Sew Time. And Sew Time is going to happen on Thursday at 10 a.m. Make sure you're signed up for our Sew Time Club. And then also, guess what? Sew Expo starts next week. So we are going to be with the Baby Lock Company um, in the Sew Fun event. Look for us. We're going to be demonstrating machines and we're going to want to answer any questions you might have about a machine you're looking for. Okay, so again, this is Mo. This is Snippets. And I'm going to see you for Snippets in two weeks. You all take care, all right? Thank you.